Yesterday I told a story that I told uh, many times now over the years. Some 35 years ago I found myself in a Southern Baptist church down in Jacksonville, Florida on Good Friday. And the homily was one phrase and lasted for 45 minutes. It's Friday, but Sunday's a coming. Well, Sunday's here. That forced me to look at the cross through the lens of the empty tomb, through the lens of the resurrection. Look back at the suffering and death of Jesus through the resurrection. We are called to look at life through that lens, the lens of the resurrection. It was a cosmic event that happened 2,000 years ago. We're told on Good Friday, the moment Jesus died, the temple veil was rent in two from top to bottom. It's a huge earthquake. The world turned dark at noon. The word there is dark, not like, you know, dark night with a little bit of stars and moon. It was dark, no light. A cosmic event that changed the world. But Easter is more than that. It's a way of life. It's a way of living. Just three months ago we heard, born for you as a Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Yesterday, a Savior died for you. For this hour I came, Jesus said. I came that you might have life, have life to the fullest. So Easter is about you. The resurrection is about you, about your eternal life. It's a gift that God wants to give you. Yes, the historical event is there. We base our faith on this historical event, the death and resurrection of Christ. And many have went out to try to disprove this event that happened 2,000 years ago. An interesting book a few years ago by a man named Lee Strobel. He was an investigator by, nature, by his occupation and a writer. His wife became Christian. He was an atheist. They took a year off of work to try and disprove the resurrection through history. He went to Rome and he went to the Holy Land. A whole year, he tried to disprove the resurrection, invoking experts and doctors and all types of things, going through historical records. In that process, he discovered that the death and resurrection of Christ is an historical event that's indisputable. Gazing upon the Shroud of Turin, he felt God's love embraced him and he became a Christian. He said the stone was not broken into, the stone was rolled away from the inside. This one ton stone. It's the breaking out of God into our world. The resurrection of Christ is an event that changed the world forever. It's the foundation of our faith. It's the power of our faith. I was in Rome a few years ago. This one statue of Jesus really caught my eye. One of my favorite images of him. It's called the Risen Lord by Michelangelo. A little less known, uh, one of his works, it's in Sa Santa Maria Minerva in Rome. The statue stands seven foot tall. It's the risen Christ. He is this huge, muscular man with wounds in his hands and his feet. He's carrying the cross with one hand. He's kind of discarding it. And the power is in his face. He's gazing forward with a power and resolution. He's discarding the cross. And he's moving forward to resurrected life. For this purpose that I came, he said, to conquer death. The power.
power of the resurrection, one of the anchor points of my faith is the power of the resurrection that changed the world. But it changed people. Look at the apostles before and after the resurrection. Look at Peter on Good Friday and Peter after Pentecost. It stands up boldly and proclaims the risen Lord. They were transformed by the experience. The power went through them. The power that changed the world was the power that was inside of the apostles and the early Christians. Before we were called Christians for the first 200 years, they were called the people of the resurrection. The Easter people. Because they lived their lives with this conviction and power that flowed through them. We're still the Easter people. That power is within us. The power of the Holy Spirit is in us. The power to change the world. But it must be unleashed through us, the body of Christ. That's who we are. Easter is about you. About your eternal life. The tomb is empty. The question is, will your tomb be empty? Will my tomb be empty? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, so that those who believe in him might have eternal life. What does it mean to believe in him? To live with him. To allow him into our hearts, into our souls. To be united with him in this life. That's the power of the resurrection. Christ lives in us. He wants to unleash the power of eternal life on the world through us. We're still the Easter people. We're still the people of resurrection. That's who we are. If you allow that spirit to live in and through us, we unite with him in this life. We live with him. He lives in us. His mystical body here on earth. If we die with him, then we will live with him forever. To believe means to believe in Christ, in his church. In that grace is pouring upon the world through his sacraments, through his church. Through his body given up, his blood poured out for us. If you eat my body and drink my blood, you'll have eternal life. That's why we're here. We are the people of the resurrection. And that power wants to flow through us. We can change the world. But it must begin in us. We must accept the gift of eternal life. We must accept the gift. Open our hearts. I've been praying in the Holy Spirit prayer for three years now. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of us your faithful. And then kindle within us the fire of your love. The fire of your love. A new Pentecost. It must begin with us. We are God's plan. We are his mystical body here on earth. Alive. We're alive. Christ is alive. In his mystical body. And that's us. We don't need any wimpy Christians. The power has to flow through us. 2,000 years have come and gone, the tomb's still empty, and we're still the Easter people. Hallelujah! Happy Easter! Happy Easter!